Good morning, Rolf. How are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? Good. Thanks very much. Uh, first, we'd like to say uh, thank you very much for your time for this interview. I'm sure it'll be a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> we believe that, you know, as uh, Bill Clinton said, you know, everyone has an interesting story to tell. That's true. To share. That's true. Right. My first question is, why you chose Australia? There's other continent, you know, America, Asia, you know, South America. Could you tell us, you know, well, the story uh, behind it? I was born in Germany, I lived in Germany, and uh, in the 1950s, Australia actually uh, put ads in the newspapers wanting migrants to come to Australia. They believed Australia was underpopulated. They wanted migrants to come, and actually subsidized uh, the the voyage and uh, if you are, I was 18 as a matter of fact I was 17 I had to get the permission of my parents and I thought well that's a nice adventure uh, it was cheap like it wasn't as cheap as for Englishmen but it was still uh, cheaper than it would otherwise have been so I said what for nothing to lose right. just stay there for a couple of years and come back and uh, so I went to an interview to the uh, uh, embassy in, in Germany, in Hanau, and uh, was accepted. And uh, uh, it was an exciting time when you're a teenager to yes. go to the other side of the world. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. What year was it? Nine, I came here in 1959. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. how did you find, I mean, the, 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 the Australian at the time, you know, to accept, you know, non-Australian, you know, it was known still, you know, the white, you know, uh, po uh, Australian policy? Yes, uh, it, it, not only that, but uh, it was not so long after the war. And uh, as you know, Germany was um, the enemy. Mm -hmm. And there was the saying, the only good German is the dead German. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, um, I, I did find people, there is, you know, still today there's a bias against Germans, they, they are regarded as, a, a, well, a bit stupid and, and starting wars or whatever. And um, uh, it, it, it is, it was kind of hard uh, because, um, because of this attitude. Girlfriends, Australian girls might say, Oh, if my mother knew I was going out with German, she'd kill me. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But uh, once you, by and large, Australians are not, they're, they're friendly enough. So um, if you can speak English mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and they have good friends, like I have good Australian friends now, you wouldn't find better anywhere else. So I'm quite happy. Every country has people who are... Uh, uh, you don't want to be friends. Yes. So, how it, it started in uh, Indonesian on, on horizon? You know, you known as a uh, Indonesian. You know, you yes. can speak Indonesian. You can yeah. write Indonesian. You love Indonesian poetry. Yes, how for, it, it started? Yeah, for for some years, I wasn't actually so keen about Australia because there is, as you know, almost like a cult going to Bali. And what they do is, you know, get drunk. They know nothing about the culture, but it was a holiday destination, which I didn't even want to take part in. But um, I was going to a uh, cartoonist conference in Japan, uh, taking Garuda Airlines, and uh, it had a stopover in Tenpasa, and uh, something was wrong with the plane, and it was delayed, so I had to stay there for, for a day. And I had to walk around uh, Bali, and I had and knew some people there, and I thought, this place is beautiful. After all, I'm missing out. Flowers everywhere, and uh, people were good looking, and uh, it was so interesting. And I thought, this is a, a country. Uh, I should learn the language and uh, and come back. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I said to my when I came back, I said to my family, our next holiday. We go to Bali, <laughs> and uh, we didn't regret it. Right. Interesting enough that uh, my wife is uh, Samoan, and the Samoan language, to a great extent, uh, uh, there's so many similar words to in the Bahas Indonesia that uh, it shows that the Pacific Islands were largely populated by people that came from Asia, 
As a matter of fact, uh, Lila looks a bit Indonesian. When we go to Bali, people call her, uh, speak in the past, I'm Indonesian, just I'm thinking she's Indonesian mm-hmm. because she looks so similar. So many, but like, I would think of uh, dozens or hundreds of words are similar. Like Lima, five, Tepulu, Afi, really? like, it, like Api, Afi, Tepulu, Tepulu, and right. so many, many words are uh, Mati. Uh, uh, I can think of dozens of words which are the same. Very interesting. So Bali, who met in a you learning Bahasa, yes, fall in but, love with but Bali. But since then, uh, be always, there's also a, uh, uh, a writers meeting sometimes in uh, uh, Sulawesi, which I went a couple of times and I met uh, many Indonesians and. As you know, Indonesians are interested in painting and culture and art, and I felt right at home. Uh, and uh, and I went back because I loved it. Such an interesting country. Yes, we are lucky to have you as neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. We'll be neighbors forever. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But but uh, you went, I believe, that, uh, a few times to uh, writers' festival in Bali. Could you tell us about a bit of this festival? Uh, it was a good experience. Uh, you meet uh, people from all over the world. Some of them for the first time in Indonesia, and uh, for them it was an eye opener. And uh, it's always nice to meet people, not only writers, but uh, I went to. Uh, cartoonist meetings and I, as a matter of fact I organized uh, exhibitions in in, uh, in Bali and uh, made friends with uh, many Indonesian cartoonists and they have very good cartoonists too and we had exhibitions uh, in uh, uh, in the framework of hotels hotels in Bali sometimes they welcome uh, people who from other countries who put on an exhibition and I'm trying to um, get exhibitions of uh, Indonesian cartoons here too, but at the moment, as you know, with the pandemic, uh, uh, we have to wait till it's over, and I think we'll, we'll do good things. Right. Also, I mean, you're known as a cartoonist, so you used to work with The Age, right? Uh, I published uh, oh, a few dozen cartoons with The Age, yes. I uh, haven't published and have sort of lost the connection for the last few years. But uh, uh, I was, as a matter of fact, I, I was working with the Indonesian magazine Bok Bok in Bali. Right. Uh, uh, you remember that but, magazine? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that was good to meet, uh, meet with cartoons. They're fun people. Yes. Yeah. And, and I contributed cartoons to many magazines uh, in Germany. My sister still lives in Germany and she's a journalist. So she placed uh, many of my cartoons into German magazines and uh, I contributed to books, uh, collections, so mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Right. But also, uh, uh, I saw you know, uh, your books and I believe you published uh, more than two, three, four books you know, all together. And 50 children books bo- all together. 50 books. <laughs> <laughs> How it started uh, to become, you know, a writer that's so many you know, 50 books there's a lots of books yes How... uh, i must uh, add that uh, most of them are small books mm-hmm. children's books like, like 32 pages but uh, i used to do they used to publish about two books a year and i've been doing it for many years i must admit i self-published some books mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, certain uh, books are, are hard to get a publisher for I wrote a book about my travels through the Pacific. I took part in the anti-nuclear protests, uh, and I sailed to Mura Roa, where the French tested their nuclear bombs, and uh, wrote a book about that. And uh, uh, I get good feedback. People read it, uh, get in touch with me, and want to know about things. And uh, I was invited to New Zealand a couple of times, uh, because they also have a strong um, movement against uh, nuclear testing in the Pacific. As a matter of fact, I was uh, once arrested here in Melbourne when uh, a nuclear submarine visit uh, yes. American Greenfish came here. Yes. And uh, I was invited to say a few words. 
I didn't even say anything against the uh, submarine that said that nuclear testing is wrong, and uh, I was arrested. Really? And uh, uh, I thought, oh, well, no big deals, but uh, there was a court case, and the police uh, accused me of spitting at them, kicking them, punching them in the face. None of it was true. Right. And uh, it was outrageous, and I thought, I'm going to fight this. And you can't. Because yeah. if you have three policemen saying that you spat at them or kicked them, what can you do? Of course, the judge takes their side. So I went to Penrith jail. <laughs> How long were you in jail? Only oh, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, uh, because my my wife um, insisted that like she would, she paid a fine and and they let me out after a couple of weeks. But it was a good experience. Yes, it was, uh, it was now I can. Can say I've been a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> Do you write a story or an article about the experience in jail? Oh yeah, look, uh, I, I was. It, that's been many years ago now, so uh, I don't bear any crutches. But uh, at the time, I was quite upset, and uh, I wrote a letter to the Age, of, not thinking they would publish it. But if a hundred people write against the, you know what they'd experience with the police, maybe they will publish it. Well, what the age did is they didn't publish it, but they passed a letter on to the police. Right. And, uh, also, and the police came and, uh, of course, they took a dim view of uh, of talking badly about them. Only, I was only telling the truth. I was lying on the ground and uh, thrown to the ground, they kicked me. And, and my lawyer said, it's no good telling, it just causes bad blood, you know. Don't, that's a lawyer telling you not to tell the truth because really? it's, it's bad for your case. But the truth was that they, they took joy, they took pleasure in throwing me to the ground and kicking me. And, then, and people think, oh, Australian police doesn't do this. They do, they did. Right. And, uh, and, uh, and you can't do anything about it. Yes. Was it the same time with the rainbow uh, boat? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, really this, it is, yes, that was that was the same sort of movement against uh, 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 French testing in the in the Pacific, which always outraged me. I love the Pacific. I, I, my wife is Samoan. I travelled there many times, and to see it, Europeans coming to the Pacific. Trying out nuclear bombs, which is uh, <laughs> it's outrageous. Yes, the yes. whole business of colonialism is bad anyway. But Europeans took went, Europeans went all over the world: South America, North America, Australia, India, Indonesia. You know, that's thinking they have a right to go into Indonesia and rule it. <laughs> what an idea! Yes. yes. So colonialism, something very bad and. Thank God it's over, but there's still, of course, uh, this attitude of Europeans that uh, they think they're smarter, don't they? Yes, that's <laughs> right, that's right. What about the, uh, you went to you know, internationally conference for as a you know, cartoonist. Could you tell us about this you know, conference? What, what actually what actually they do? Uh, I went to many such uh, meetings in Japan, in America, in Cuba. It was very interesting. And they have them in Europe too, and it's always good to to meet. Sometimes you meet uh, famous cartoonists which you have admired for years, like Oliphant and uh, and others. Uh, and uh, uh, usually they are they are fun people and they have a good time. Right. And uh, you exchange books and. Uh, 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 it hasn't been well. There hasn't been a meeting for some years now, but. Uh, if there's another one, I go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The last question is: I mean, uh, I remember that I you know, offered you you know, uh, a job, voluntary you know, job as a secretary at the Jambatan Poetry Society. Why did you interest it in a with this you know, secretary job at the Poetry Society? Could you you t- talked me into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it, it's it's good. To, uh, I enjoy these meetings where. Where people uh, you know, have an outlet for their for their creative activities. Much of our contributions are maybe let's face it second rate, but it's why not? Why not? Uh, it's amateurish and uh, uh, and 
not it's not the best poetry sometimes, but um, it's it's good to uh, participate in cultural events. Uh, poetry is one of those. Yes, and also I mean the idea is really poetry is for everyone. Exactly. Yes, children yeah. love poetry. That's right. Yes. And they, they, they remembered poetry so easily. I have two children, and they, you read a book with verses once, they remember it. They remember it for days. Yes, yes. Now, that was the last question. This is very, very last question. What your message to those who want to be you know, a poet, a writer? A message? Well, first of all, you have you have you have to have something to contribute. You have to have some experience behind you, which you want to share. Whether it's a, an adventure or whether it's an experience with the beauty of nature, or whatever it is, uh, so you need something to share. Something which other people would be interested in. What do you think? Yes, I think I agree, uh, Rolf. Uh, but again, you know, thank you very much for your time, Rolf. This is Saturday morning, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, on the 7th of January 2023.